With this video, we begin uh, some discussion of the essential features of organic reaction mechanisms. And this one's going to focus on the role of nucleophiles and electrophiles. Our learning goals include the roles of those uh, species in reactions. So there are lots of different organic reaction types, but a lot of them depend upon these two things, nucleophiles and electrophiles. So let's remind ourselves what those are. A nucleophile, which means nucleus loving, is an electron rich center that has a non-bonding pair of electrons. Uh, we can also think of this as being like a base. Bases in organic chemistry tend to be nucleophiles. An electrophile, on the other hand, is an electron-loving species. It's an electron-deficient center. Uh, it typically plays the role of an acid in, uh, in reactions. And we've seen both of these at many stages uh, before, both in this course and in the earlier course. So hopefully these are not new concepts for you. Now what I want to do is outline organic mechanistic steps. There's four predominant steps that one can use to uh, basically uh, characterize almost any organic reaction. And these two species, nucleophiles and electrophiles, will play a big role in many of these steps. So the first of these uh, is pretty obvious it plays a big role. It's called nucleophilic attack. The second mechanism step is called loss of a leaving group. Sounds very poetic, doesn't it? The third would be rearrangement, so some sort of isomerization of an organic molecule. And the third and the fourth is proton transfer. And we already know that acid-base chemistry very much is uh, based on nucleophiles and electrophiles. Now, it's not my habit to ask you to memorize things, and I'm not going to ask you to memorize these, but if you'd like a mnemonic for remembering these reaction types, you might think of the letters uh, from L to R, L-M-N-O-P-Q-R. Every other letter gives you a clue for one of these steps. L for loss of a leaving group, N for nucleophilic attack, P for proton transfer, and R for rearrangement. So this gives you a way to remember what these four steps are. All right, let's talk about nucleophilic attack. The net result of a nucleophilic attack is going to be the formation of a new bond, typically a carbon-carbon, carbon-nitrogen, or carbon-oxygen bond. This means it's, it's in essence, a, an addition reaction. So let's see what that might look like diagrammatically. Now, I've, I've cleverly labeled the nucleophile as an N with a little subscript U so that you can see the nucleophile, and I've shown that it has a non-bonding pair of electrons, as good nucleophiles do. Now, what that nucleophile will do is to take that non-bonding pair of electrons and use it to attack an electrophilic side of another molecule. In this case, the carbon center is, is the electrophilic part, and the L, which technically stands for leaving group, is not an electron deficient part. So the nucleophile is going to seek out where the positive charge is, because remember it's an electron rich, it's looking for an opposite charge. Once it makes that attack, we'll end up with the species shown on the right hand side. And I've drawn a red bond to show you the new bond that has been created from the nucleophile to a carbon. Um, this, in this particular case, we've also lost the L, but I want to assure you that this doesn't always happen when you have a nucleophilic attack. So let's look at another example. This is a case of water undergoing a nucleophilic attack on an acetyl chloride. In this case, the oxygen has a non-bonding pair of electrons that attack the electrophilic side of the carbonyl bond. Okay, when it attacks there, the double bond will go up, swing up, and uh, join the other two non-bonding pairs on the oxygen of the carbonyl to make a negatively charged uh, oxygen up there. So the new carbon-oxygen bond is the bond that's created by the nucleophilic attack, and we haven't had anything that left as a leaving group from this, uh, from this arrangement. Now what would be good nucleophiles? Well, typically strong bases. That usually means nitrogen or oxygen. It also could mean anions. All of these things can serve as good nucleophiles and undertake a nucleophilic attack. Uh, loss of a leaving group. This sounds pretty self-evident what it would be, but let's go through it anyway. The net result is going to be breaking a bond to carbon. So we can think of this as being an example of a decomposition step. The last one was an addition step. This is a decomposition. So in this way, they're also complementary. So how might this look? Well, here's another diagram. Um, now I'm showing a, a molecule that uh, has carbon bonded to something X, which is our leaving group. Um, we're also going to label the carbon as being an electro, electron deficient center and the X as being an electron rich center. When, it, when the X leaves, it takes its electrons with it. 
and it leaves behind a carbocation. So the result of this decomposition reaction is actually to uh, leave two ions in place. Uh, one of them, a uh, carbocation, which is a, a, a positive ion where the positive charge is located on a carbon. We're going to see that again in another one of these fundamental steps. Now, the good leaving groups might include things like weaker bases, the conjugate bases of strong acids. So those would be things like nitrate or chloride or sulfate, things like this that uh, you know are weak bases. It also would include things like poor nucleophiles. All right, so this has been a very quick introduction to a couple of the organic mechanism steps, and we'll see some more of those in the next video.